Welcome back. And finally, for, for camp, we have Ian Hansen, who uh, actually still lives in camp and uh, is a, a member of the existing, or the, the just recently uh, devolved part, uh, assembly. Ian, what skills do you believe you actually bring to the assembly? And uh, if elected, what portfolios would you like to, to, to hold? I'm not sure skill is the right word, but I think experience is an important word because um, I've been an uh, elected member for 16 years over five consecutive assemblies. So I think my skill would be knowing how the system works, uh, knowing how or knowing how not to reinvent the wheel to a certain extent. And I think that's it's always very good to have new people coming in, and I, I yes. appreciate that, I applaud it. But you also need to have some sort of continuity, and I think I can offer that. Um, as far as the portfolio goes, I would very much like to continue to hold the portfolio I held for the last four years, which is he um, health and social services. Right. Very okay. interesting one. Um, but I wouldn't be adverse to having any, any others. What, what are the main issues, do you think, that will need to be addressed by the, the uh, incoming Parliament or the Assembly? I think there's a huge amount, Richard. I think the, the fact that our capital programme, looking forward for the next 10 years, is immense. And it's almost scary. But if we don't invest in it, it doesn't bode well for the future of the Falklands. So I think that's going to be a huge challenge, how we handle that. Uh, so that, that would be the biggest challenge I think we have. Right. When first elected, members are very much made of, very much aware of what the opinion of the, of the electorate is. But once elected, how would you actually maintain the knowledge of what people wanted? I mean, Facebook is used, but it appears to me that it's actually used by quite a few people as a soapbox and ra rather than a, a, a way of finding out people's opinion. How would you deal with that? The same way as I've dealt with the last probably eight years since Facebook really, or social media really yeah. took hold. And that is, if I get somebody talking on Facebook um, and I believe they've got something wrong, I pick up the phone and phone them. Yeah. And, and that's how I deal with most of my constituents because some of my constituents don't particularly like putting something on Facebook that's because right. they, somebody else puts something on and then the whole thread gets muddled. So yeah. that's how I do it. I, I do it personally as much as I can. A number of large and essential capital infrastructure projects are either underway or just about to come underway. And you've mentioned it before, but uh, how would you see the funding uh, should be financed? Uh, well, the, 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 probably the, the three largest projects that I can think of, I mean, obviously the port is a yeah. massive one. Uh, then we've got the power station here in Stanley and Tussock House. Um, Tussock House is already funded within the budget. Yeah. That is there. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting, or the new assembly is still waiting for the final cost of the port, which is going to be pretty eye-watering, I believe. Yeah. But we're going to have to bite the bullet and say we do it or we don't. And the same with the power station, something that we have to have, or that the, the town has to have. So I think they're the three biggest ones. Right. There's been recent criticism about the uh, uh, level of the pensions, old age pension. Um, in view of the fact that during their working years, many of the people who are on pensions now didn't have the ability to take out a supplementary pension or another pension scheme and if they did the actual income from those things is, is derisory. How do we going to deal with this? I think the whole pension thing has to have a huge review because I, I'm not an expert on it at all apart from the fact I'm a bit like you I'm nearly drawing one we must be both getting close to drawing our pensions uh, but uh, Apart from that, no, it definitely needs some sort of really looking into it in a review. And I, I would certainly support in the next assembly, if elected, that we really look into it because it, it's messy and, and a lot of people don't understand it and it's, it's, it's unfair on a lot of people. Thank you very much for those. Uh, the, the, the suggestion that I've only just coming into pension, I've been drawing for 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, communications and the internet have become uh, quite a hot issue, both in Stanley and Camp. Um, how can the Falklands receive the same sort of uh, service that is expected around the world these days? Um, I, I, ca I couldn't honestly say to you, Richard, that I could tell you exactly how we could receive it, but I think there's opportunities. I mean, no doubt at all you're almost referring to Starlink or whatever, which is a big thing worldwide now, global thing. Um, and I believe that uh, there is a base in Punta Arenas now of Starlink that we could link into. Uh, and my view is that if we have any opportunity to improve what we have now, and it should be improved because it's not ideal f by any means, uh, we should look at it, we should investigate it at least. Support for camp education was a, quite a major issue in the last Farmers mm -hmm. Week. Um, how do you see we should address this issue? Well, I think people have uh, taken, I don't say things into their own hands, but uh, just the day before we were dissolved, uh, Tez Bachman and I met with uh, a group of people and a group of people from the education department and a group of people from camp who uh, were expressed their concerns and they have this group together now and I hope that continues within the next, you know, when the next assembly comes along. All right, yeah. Um, climate change is becoming an issue that we just can't ignore anymore. What steps should the Falklands take to make the islands more carbon neutral? And given that renewable energy has developed considerably in the last few years, would you support the development of the new um, power station being mainly based on renewables? Absolutely. Um, it probably won't happen when the new power station is built with, in the next two, three years that it will be totally renewable, but it must be built in a way that it can uh, cope with renewables coming into it and replacing diesel engines or yeah. whatever. And, and it's very obvious in camp now that I've noticed that there are so many um, so many different farms now have solar panels and the generators just aren't running like they used to be. No, that's true. And it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It's been suggested in some circle that members spend too much time travelling overseas and not enough on local issues. If you, can you comment on that? And uh, would, you be, are you, would you be prepared to continue to travel? Yes, I would, um, if I felt it was the right thing to do. I mean, you know yourself that the years that you travelled, you probably uh, felt it was it was the proper thing to do. Um, I think the fact that we've had almost two years without any travel from the Falklands because of COVID isn't a particularly good thing because it's the best thing, I think, to talk to people face to face. Um, so... Yes, I would be prepared to travel again, but only if I be believed it was the right thing to do. Okay. The COVID the global, <coughs> global pandemic has created problems all around the world with lots of knock-ons and such like. And although the Falklands has been able to avoid major problems, it has raised the issue of how vulnerable the Falklands are because of isolation and reliance on imported goods and transport. Do we need to address this in some way or alleviate some of this? I guess it'll depend in the next four years because COVID has, if you like, relaxed a bit. But that's not to say it won't come back again. And I don't believe that we should relax our quarantines and I don't believe we should relax, uh, uh, just say we just open up flights for tourism and, and uh, cruise ships or whatever. Uh, without being absolutely sure it's not going to endanger our people. But I think the crux of your question there, Richard, was supplies or whatever. Reli like, reliance reliance on, on, on imported goods. And yeah, yeah. And th again, that's something we're just going to have to deal with as it happens. Housing um, appears to be a problem area, particularly for the, for the younger people, people on lower wages and such like. How could the lower paid 
be help to get onto the housing ladder and uh, particularly when the cost of cost of building plots has gone up considerably and the, that's even before they actually buy a house to put on it. Yeah, that's a really difficult question Richard or difficult for me because I really don't have the answer to that. No. It, it just seems to me that the, the prices of building plots, the prices of housing for somebody who for instance lives in camp or well, lives anywhere, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's almost becoming unaffordable, and there's something we should do about it. But I'm sorry, I don't have the answer what it is. It, but it's something that should really seriously be discussed, right? And debated. Yeah. Ian, thank you very much. Thank you, Richard.